How's it going everybody? My name is Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. In the film that you're about to see, we're going to take a 4,000 mile solo road trip from Cadillac, Michigan to Fairbanks, Alaska in this car with this many miles and this dog. We're going to see a bit of the Great Lakes, the Great Plains, the Canadian Shield, the Rocky Mountains, lots of scenery, lots of wildlife, just me and the dog in the old car and 4,000 miles of highway. So just stick around, we'll take a 4,000 mile road trip through Canada on our way to Alaska. Stay tuned. So far so good. Driving through beautiful northern southern Michigan and wouldn't you know it, one of the first things that comes on the radio is the Bee Gees Night Fever. One of my favorite songs, and because of copyright, I can't play it. Love this song. Daisy and I are sitting here in the middle of a traffic jam on the Mackinac Bridge. The winds are super high and they've got everything slowed way down. We're not going nowhere. Check out that big ship down there breaking water. That's pretty awesome. It's nasty out there today. What do you think there, Daisy? Daisies are so fine, you'll get a dozen for a dime because no one wants them. <sighs> Man, what are we going to do here? Daisy and I are in St. Ignis now. Just crossed the bridge. We're going to stop at a place I usually stop to go smell dipping. A place called Foley Creek. And it's a good place for Daisy to get out, get herself a drink, walk around, do what dogs do. And uh, then we're gonna gas up and head to Canada. Stay tuned. I've been coming here pretty much my entire life, fishing. You walk this beach and there's a creek down at the end. standard as far as Upper Peninsula Cricks go. This dumps out into the bay here, just north of St. Ignace, into Lake Huron. You know, I remember being on this particular crick when I was, I don't know, four, five, six. Some of my very, very first memories in life in general have been right here in St. Ignace. Pretty good place. I would love to just pitch a lawn chair here, grab a good book in the sun, and do nothing, and just kind of soak up being here. <sighs> but we can't really do that. We got to keep rolling. When you're headed to Alaska, just about no matter where you're from, unless you happen to be from the Yukon Territory, when you're going to Alaska, you best get your butt in motion and go. Dawdling for any amount of time adds up. And man, it's a trip that seems like it takes forever anyway. So when you stop, you always got to have that in mind. Get back on the road. Put your foot in the kitchen. Get the car moving. Goof around too much. You may never get there. Daisy and I are in Ontario, north of Sault Ste. Marie by about, I don't know, 75, 80 miles. And uh, Lake Superior is smoking. I'm gonna take you guys over and show you. This is amazing. Check this out. This is no place to be. If there's one thing I see all the time is it's hard to get what's going on into the picture itself. And I, I wish there was some way you guys could see how massive these waves are. epic water out there. It's a full grown white pine up on top of that hill. It is 
Georgia. Awesome. Good girl. That's a good dog. Let's go somewhere and pee. You gotta pee, I gotta pee. Let's go pee. Ontario. It's cold. It's time for a sweater. Maybe a scarf. Maybe a hat and gloves. Whew. Let me show you guys around. Daisy and I are stopped just for a pee break on the side of the road in a little trailhead. Whew. Oh man, that's the bomb. <sighs> you know, I'm having a major case of deja vu. It seems like it was yesterday that I was traveling the same road in the same car with the same dog wearing the same sweater doing the same trip. Huh. Man, that feels so much better. It's got to be, if it's 40, I'd be surprised. Usually I can stop at this trailhead. There's a bathroom back in there, but the snow's not even gone yet. They don't even have the gate open. You know, you could chalk this up to April in Ontario, but it's not April anymore. It's May. And it's like the 10th of May. And it should be like mosquitoes and warm here by now. Ontario's cold, don't get me wrong. But right now, you know, so much for global warming, eh? I mean, it's like the coldest April Ontario's had in a while. Wasn't really a super hard winter. It was a long, chilly spring. I want to get going, but Daisy needs a chance to go walk around. She's been penned up a long time. Time for dinner, or as I call it, beef ravioli without a spoon even. You know, packing up, the, uh, the last thing I thought about was a spoon. I thought about it like 10 times and I just keep walking past the kitchen time after time going to the garage. So no, no big wonder that I didn't ever pack it. You know, Daisy's a huge fan of McDonald's. I think that food is garbage, but she always has to stop. Mm. That's awesome. And Daisy's, Daisy's are ready for dinner too. That's right. That's right. Don't drink it right out of my water bottle, you hippie. There you go. Eating ravioli without a spoon is a little tricky because they can build up too high and then roll down and hit you in the eyeball. You kind of got to watch it. I need to get a spoon. Nothing's quite as refreshing as a nice cold can of ravioli. Now all this area through the Ontario Canadian Shield area, it looks a lot like this. Big white pines, lots of spruce, lots of rock. White sugar sand beaches, crystal clear Lake Superior. It's just a fantastic part of the world to be in. Ontario is one of my absolute favorite places to be. You can see that the scenery is just great. There's, there's rivers and good road, blue sky sunshine I mean really what else could you ask for we go through towns like Wawa and Terrace Bay White River headed through Marathon on our way to Nipigon you can see we're just about out of, out of light for the daytime passing a huge mining operation this is up by the town of Marathon and uh, I'm not exactly sure what they mine but they're pretty serious about it because it looks like a city this is pretty much going to be the end of filming for today, and we'll pick up first thing in the morning. That's pretty much going to be uh, that's going to be all we're going to shoot tonight. We're going to call this day one. I'm going to keep driving, but we really can't film from here. And as fussy turkeys poured over Lincoln. See you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We are uh, in the town of Nipigon at the very top of Lake Superior. Good morning, Daisy. That's right, good morning. You're such a sweetheart of the puppies. Yes. Everybody should have a good dog like this. She's the best. She is the best. What is it? What is it? So this is how the morning ro routine goes. 
wake up, dig out of your sleeping bag, put your bag away, put your pillow away. Oh my goodness, this glass is clouding up. Get everything packed away, make coffee, let the dog go get walked. I'm gonna take this bag, wiggle my way out of it, down to the floorboards of the car, get my feet out, pull it all back up. Crawl out of your bag, stuff it back in the stuff sack, use your bag as an armrest all day. I've been running this stove since last spring. Hope it still works. Check the antifreeze. Yeah, we're topped off. Check the oil. That looks plenty good. Now this is pretty far removed from a picturesque Canadian wilderness setting. I'm in the middle of a little tiny truck stop town, but the reason I stayed here for the night is uh, twofold. Number one, I couldn't go any farther. I was pretty much a road zombie. And number two, I needed gas to get my coffee ready. This is a pretty sweet setup. A little collapsible travel filter. Some friends of the channel sent this to me. It's really sweet. Works great. You can put a big filter in there and make a lot of coffee. And I like a lot of coffee. Nice. a happy little scene. Coffee cooking away. Oh yeah. So the plan today, if such a thing exists, is just to keep going west. Got an early start. That always helps. Beautiful day here. Somewhere uh, in the vast wasteland between Thunder Bay and Kenora in Ontario. And I'm just off the highway. Let me, let me show you what I'm looking at here. I just pulled onto a little side track just off the highway. If you keep going down this driveway, which isn't a driveway, you come out to this road. This is a section of the old highway reclaimed by nature. I can see logs and trees down across it. And if you turn around, you can see this road kind of just wanders off into the distance. And it is uh, totally reclaimed by nature. What a cool place to stop. Let's go for a walk, bees. Just to the south of us, you can hear the highway. You could probably walk this trail for 100 miles and never see anything. I wish there wasn't a ton of wood here. I'd take this trail to the next crossroad just to see where it goes. This is truly a lost highway. Sweet. Check out this old whiskey bottle. No telling how old it is, but it is a cork top. It's not a screw top bottle, so it has to be fairly old. It says Heaven Hill Quality Formula. Then on the bottom it says Bardstown, Kentucky. Symbol of excellence. Interesting. Down here on the bottom it says Federal Law Forbids Sale or Reuse of This Bottle. Huh. Go figure. That's a beautiful day on the Trans-Canadian Highway. If you watch some of the videos from last spring when I came through here, there were six inches of snow and ice on everything. Same country, but it's probably 65 degrees right now. From here, we just keep heading west. We travel through the towns of Dryden, Ignis, Kenora, Vermilion Bay, on our way out towards the Great Plains. 
Ontario just seems to go on forever. But that's a good thing because there's a lot of cool stuff. As you see here, we're kind of just coming out of the woods. And this is where we start getting into the plains, west of Kenora, east of Winnipeg. Finally coming out of cabin country, almost to the Great Plains. This is such deja vu. I realize I'm wearing the same clothes I wore last year. It shows what a hobo and a bum I am. The hat is new though. Almost right up to the place where the trees stop and the Great Plains begin. For all you Canadians out there, I assume it's the 100th Meridian, like the Tragically Hip song, where the Great Plains begin. But uh, I don't have a map to confirm that. It might be the 100th Meridian on the other side. Honestly, I don't know which side they're talking about. The car's running good, the dog's sleeping. Everything's going good. This section of highway is 45 to 65 miles long and you literally transition from that rugged Canadian Shield country out into absolute prairie. It's a pretty dramatic change for how short of a distance it takes place in. Popped out into the prairie. They don't call them the Great Plains for nothing either. There's a lot of them. Check this place out. Little outhouse in the middle between two divided highways. Listed as a campsite. There's one highway. And over here is the other highway. No matter how many times I drive through the plains, I'm always struck by how much I actually like it. I complain about it by the time I'm to the other side and just ready to be done with it. But there is a charm and kind of a magic that goes along with the plains. Southern Manitoba is no exception. Southern Saskatchewan, just different, beautiful. There's, there's something cool about being out there in that much nothing. Now, I used to take the Yellowhead Highway, but lately I've been taking the, uh, the Divided Highway because it's easier to drive at night. We're headed to Regina and then up to Saskatoon, hopefully tomorrow. across the plains, western Manitoba, almost to Saskatchewan. This is probably going to be it for me for the rest of the day. I'm going to kick on the high beams and just keep going. See you in the morning. Good morning everybody. This is the morning of day three. Daisy and I are about a hundred miles south of Saskatoon. We're, we're pulled over at this rest area. It's an abandoned rest area. I try to stop here every year just because it's a great place to let the dog go. I'll show you guys that in a minute. Because daisies like to get out and they like to run around. That's what they like because they're fancy and pretty. Yep. One of those morning routines. Get up, stuff your sleeping bag, clean up your car, walk the dog, check the oil, check the antifreeze. I think today I'm gonna find a truck stop, and take a shower. Yeah. This is one of my favorite places to stop out here on this stretch of highway. We're just north of a town called Boothia, I believe between Regina and Saskatoon. And this is an abandoned roadside pull-off. It actually has uh, jersey barriers and a, a locked gate in front of it. There's grass growing up in the roundabout. But it's, it's basically probably a quarter mile of paved road that goes around in a circle and there's grass everywhere. It's a perfect place to stop and walk a dog. The best thing about it is being that it's closed down there's not going to be anybody else that pulls in. There's going to be no other people, there's no other dogs. You kind of have the whole place to yourself. As far as I'm concerned, it's just as good as if it was open. So 
So today, Lord willing, we're going to make it to Saskatoon, the Battle Fords, Lloydminster, Edmonton, Fort Saskatchewan. What's going on with the Daisy Dog? Who's the pretty puppy? Come on, Daisy. Daisy and I just pulled into the Battle Fords. It was snowing like crazy. I, I actually slept right over here in front of the uh, Chamber of Commerce building last spring coming up and woke up to six inches of snow and ice. And this year, it's 65 degrees. Here's one of the great roadside milestones that lets you know you're in the Battle Fords. This cool statue of a Canadian Mountie. Hi, honey. Ah. Hi, Brooke. Can't wait to watch you. <laughs> Getting anxious. This is Ken and Judy Chan. They've been huge supporters of Brooke's channel and this channel, Bush Radical, ever since we started. Had to stop and pay these guys a visit, and we had a wonderful time. Of course, Judy's talking about watching Brooke on season five of Alone. everybody today is the morning of the fourth day Daisy and I drove past Edmonton visited some friends up in Gibbons Alberta we drove through most of the night hit a roadside pull-off got I don't know about five hours of sleep been driving all morning We're almost to Dawson Creek and Dawson Creek is the very beginning of the Alaskan Highway Whew, it's like 8.30 in the morning on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Almost to Dawson Creek. Stopped to, uh, to let me and Daisy out of the car. Both of us need to get out for a second. I'm sure she's got to go to the bathroom and me, I'm just, you know. You just get weird after you drive for five hours straight and you get out and you just need to kind of reset.
Now this is Sakani Jeep. This is the first major dippity do in the entire Alaska Highway. This is a great big gigantic canyon that you drive down into. It's just like a mountain pass, but in reverse. You drive about four miles down a very steep grade until you get to the very bottom of this canyon. And at the bottom there's a little roadside pull off and a campground. And then you just drive out the other side. But on bad roads, it's mandatory that the semis chain up here, and I would suggest anybody going through here in the winter, best watch it. Here you see we've pulled in for our noontime break. This is a place called Bucking Horse River. The river's just behind us here. Nice little campground. Getting out of the plains and back into the boreal forest sure is nice. I don't think, Daisy, you realize there's a creek there. Come on, Daisy. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You just did it a minute ago. <laughs> it was hilarious. She was so ready to go for a walk, she runs out here on the way out and dives into that creek and it's like two feet deep. She just, boom! <laughs> Comes out to the other side. I, I don't think she knew what hit her. Took her a minute to come back across. All right, for the record, there's all kinds of confusion about this dog's name. When we bought Daisy as a puppy, she was named Maisie. Maisie, of course, Turns into Maisie Daisy and then just Daisy. People constantly ask, what's the dog's real name? The dog's name on her tag says Maisie. When I took her in to have her rabies shots re-upped, they asked me what her name was. I said Daisy. So her rabies tag says Daisy. Her old tag with our phone numbers on it says Maisie. Take your pick. Let me see what she answers to. Who's a fancy dog? Oh, see, see, fancy dog. She likes that one. Spike knows the carcass eater. Let's see if she comes to that. Spike knows. Yep, she also knows her Viking name. Spike knows the carcass eater. Because of all the collies we've had, she's been particularly fond of carcasses. She drags all kinds of garbage into the yard. Just anything under the sun. She likes chasing turkeys too. Come on. You see how wolf-like she is in her natural environment. You know, the first time I ever came to Alaska, I flew up. It was in 1997. Brooke and I went all over the state. We've been dating for a little over a year. The first time I drove up was the spring of 1998. This will be my 20th anniversary of driving up here. It was about this time of year. Weather was about like this. I made my first drive up here. I had a 1980 Ford pickup truck. Just a disaster of rust from the Midwest. And I was listening to ACDC High Voltage and to Youpers and Ray Stevens' Greatest Hits. And I listened to those three tapes probably in rotation for four days on the way up. I had actually met somebody who told me uh, of a place to go in Seattle to get on a fishing boat. The boat sails out of Seattle, they'll fly to Dutch Harbor and you go spend the summer commercial fishing. So I went to Seattle, drove all the way across the country to Seattle, and I went and talked to these folks, and they were more than happy to hire me. I was, you know, I'm a big person. I, uh, I was doing concrete at the time, so they're okay. They're like, you're, you're, you're big and you already do a hard job. You're, you know, you, you can probably handle the workload. So they were all ready to hire me. The only problem with that was you're being hired on for a percentage and it was low it was like half a percent or something to that effect and so basically what you're doing is you're signing on to X amount of work and you may bring home little or nothing or you may bring home a fairly good amount but it's still limited by the share well I, I went and I got a hotel that night in downtown Seattle and I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought about it and I was supposed to meet those guys the next day and uh, sign on and the next morning came around and I'm, I just, I couldn't bring myself to do the fishing thing. And I'd been having such a good time on the road trip 
but I just pointed the truck north and I headed for Canada. I crossed into Canada just north of Washington and drove up through uh, Prince George and then up to the Elkan Highway and ultimately through this area on the way to Alaska. And I spent that summer on Isleson Air Force Base finishing concrete. And that was 20 years ago, right now. So, happy 20th, Alaska Highway. Now this is the very first major section of the Alaska Highway. This is a, a long stretch between Fort St. John and Fort Nelson, British Columbia. You can see in the background here, we're starting to get to the mountains. You can see mountains in the distance. We'll pass through a couple little mountain ranges and after Fort Nelson, the first major, major mountain range where we drive through the parks. That's Stone Mountain Provincial Park, Muncho Lake, Liard Hot Springs area, all the way up to Watson Lake. There is the first bear of the trip. He doesn't really know what to think of us. I don't think he cares to be filmed. Good looking bear. Oh yeah, Daisy. You want to go fight that bear? I think that bear would tear you into kibble. You see that funny looking dog? Beauty! The first road bear of the season. That's so awesome. Daisy, on the other hand, is not too impressed. She's a bear fighting machine. Each mile of this stretch is getting us one step closer to the Rocky Mountains, which of course is the real highlight of the trip. We'll be in the mountains from then on. Well, I just experienced a brand new one for me. I got a long history of little hiccups on this trip, and this one, was totally unexpected. So I kept hearing something in the front end, just different. And in the last two or three miles, it was it was just, I could hear it worse and worse. And I stopped and I had a loose front wheel. The lug nuts were actually loose, which is probably my fault. I probably, the last time I had that tire off, I probably just tightened them up. And when I set it back on the ground, I didn't, you know, snug them. But, uh, Huh, that's a new one for me. But luckily, as soon as I heard it, within half a mile, I run into this pull-off and uh, everything's fine. I just tightened that wheel up, but it was, uh, it was pretty sloppy. I can think of very few things I would less have happened than have that wheel fall off. Especially considering the fact that the next leg of this trip is through the curviest, most mountainous, rockiest section in the entire highway. Somewhere where if you lost a wheel, you're gonna, you're gonna have a real problem. If you lost a wheel here, you'd go off the road in the ditch. You can see the ditches here are pretty immense, you know. It might be a steep ditch, might hit some water, but you're just gonna go off the road. But through this next section, it's so hilly and so curvy, you have to pay attention. You can't really goof off. If uh, you lost the wheel on this section, this next section, it'd be all done. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate that. I appreciate the, the place to pull over. I appreciate enough heads up to catch it before it developed into a, a problem that needed to be fixed mechanically, or worst case, before the wheel flew off and I hit the side of a mountain and died. <sighs> uh, that's a new one. Here's our second highway bear. You see that big black dog, Daisy? What, what is that? Get your foot inside here, hippie. Hey, buddy! <whistles> this time of year with all this new stuff to eat, the bears along these highway corridors it's almost impossible to get him to look at you. Daisy, get in the car. <laughs> One thing, Daisy don't tolerate no bears. She's had enough of him already. Gotta give him what for. Maybe we'll see a couple more that are a little closer to the road. We get a real close up. Here's a common sight in the North Country. This is an area that's been destroyed by a forest fire. Fires in this part of the world are 
epic in proportion to other places. A thousand acres will burn in California and it will be a worldwide news event. Up here, because there's no population, they just kind of go unnoticed. I know personally of forest fires, single fires, that have taken 300, 400,000 acres. In 2004, Alaska lost 6 million acres to forest fire. It's just a common thing in the north. This is Steamboat Summit, the biggest pass on the entire Elkan Highway. Take a look. There's something cool. Stone Mountain Sheep. Just hanging out. Driving through the parks of the Northern Canadian Rockies, Stone Mountain, Summit Lake, Muncho Lake, Liard River area, it deserves a documentary all in its own. There is too much to film here. It's just too vast, it's too beautiful. This is one of the jewels of Canada. I'm shooting a little bit of film, but there's no way to really take all this in except to be there and to drive through this next 300 miles of road. It is truly one of the most fabulous places you're ever going to see. This is the Liard River, and when you're coming into Liard country, you're in animal country. Check out this bear. He was actually scratching his back against that tree. He had a big white patch on his chest. As Soon as I stopped, he got all camera shy and he didn't want to do it anymore. But he's just standing there, trying to pretend that I can't see him. Beautiful bear. Beautiful country. It's nearly impossible to drive through this section of highway without seeing bear and bison or buffalo, whatever they are. I believe these are a woodland bison. We got ourselves a bit of a buffalo jam here. What's going on, buffies? Oh, oh, take a look at this one.
This old guy's adorable. What's going on, sweetheart? Well, hello, little Buffy. You see that little buffalo, Daisy? Oh, what a sweetie. Oh man, there's been too much stuff to film. I think I've seen, I think I've seen, uh, it's gotta be nine or 10 black bear by now. No grizzlies yet. A little while ago, I actually saw a black bear and a buffalo right on the same hillside. I could have panned from one to the other one, but you can't stop for everything, right? Good morning. It's the morning of the fifth day. We're in Watson Lake, Yukon Territory. We've got another 270 miles to get to White Horse and then from White Horse to Fairbanks. I think it's another six. Excuse me. Oh. Five or six, something like that. So this morning, Daisy and I started off just outside of Watson Lake in the Yukon Territory. And we passed Teslin, and we're on our way to White Horse, just stopping to make a cup of coffee. Daisy needed to get out, shooting some scenery. But we've had nothing but good weather, no rain, no snow, thank goodness, no ice, and things are progressing. Get my coffee all set up and ready to go. You know it's cold when you're huddled around that Coleman stove waiting for your coffee to be done. I'm actually like warming my hands next to this thing because it's a stinking cold out here. Whew. I'm guessing it's maybe 40, maybe? If that, 35? It's cold. Oh yeah. Burr. Now this is the stretch of highway between White Horse and Haines Junction. This is possibly the most underrated piece of highway anywhere ever. Beautiful sandy country, it's very dry, lots of, lots of beautiful places. The, the mountains just get better and better and better as you head towards Kluwani Lake. Today was incredibly windy. I mean, the wind was just blistering. It was amazing. You can see coming up here that the uh, the sandy bank is just getting blown away. There's it's almost tornado wind through here, just whipping. Pretty cool. I fed a fox a loaf of bread here one time back in 1998. Stopped by the side of the road. There were fox everywhere, and there were these little ground squirrels. And I threw a piece of bread to this fox and he come down and grabbed it. And I must have fed him half my loaf of bread. This country is just something. Here's an interesting spot. We're here in the Yukon Territory at a place called Otter Falls. Stopped here pretty much every year going through. I've never really stopped to take a little bit of time to film. And it's worth it. Check it out. Now, you know, I could have read the sign that tells you everything about this area, but I read it years ago and I didn't want to do it again. So I'm just going to tell you off memory. If I remember correctly, this was the bridge that was put in during the building of the Alaska Highway during World War II. I think most of the original bridge is gone, if not all of it, but this is a, a recreation of that bridge 
that was put in by the Army Corps engineers and the Canadian military. And this was one of the river crossings that the GIs put in on the Alaska Highway when it was originally built. Beautiful place, super cool, lots to look at. It's just kind of a unique little wonderful place. The bridge is awesome, the river's great, the scenery through here is, is very unique, doesn't look like anywhere else. You can see in that other picture the, the new bridge in the background, and Daisy and I are just taking a walk around on the other side of the river. Check this out, super cool old log cabin. I have no idea the history of this cabin, but you can see that it's been around for quite some time. Very low door. A lot of the old cabins were very low. I think the, the idea with trapping cabins is uh, you don't want to make them too cozy, otherwise you don't want to leave to go check your trap line. There's the old set of bed springs. And a pole roof. Could use a little paint, a little touch up. I don't know, you know, just, just some odds and ends and it'd be livable again. Very green, sustainable construction. You can see there's a tree growing there in the corner waiting to uh, grow up and make a new cabin. And speaking of a great spot, not only is this a beautiful place, but this cabin is right by the river. And that would have been your view right out of the back door of the cabin. If you look the other way, you can see that bridge that was put in to cross the river. Just a great spot. And the mountains to the south, they're phenomenal. As good as it gets. Daisy and I are at the truck stop at Otter Falls. We were across the street at the bridge for a while and we came over here. We gassed up, uh, got watered and fed. I took my first shower in, oh my goodness, I don't even know how long. Today's day five. It was the day before I left. Long time ago. I feel like a million billion dollars. It, it was so nice. And the sun's coming out, so I'm gonna throw on my sunglasses and hit the road again. Now the mountains through here are the best. I've never been anywhere where the mountains were as nice as they are through here. You know, if you watch the old Bob Ross show, and Bob Ross is always painting mountains, I think this is the mountain that everyone imagines in their mind when they're going to paint a mountain scene. This is truly one of the greatest mountain areas in the world. Coming down the hill here, we're almost to the very headwaters of Kluwani Lake. And the wind blows through this canyon at the very beginning of Kluwani Lake. It just puts clouds and clouds of dust up into the air. You'll see here in a second that the dust is almost as high as the mountains themselves. Kluwani is a big lake, really windy, lots of dangerous water, beautiful, beautiful area. It just leaves you speechless. This part of the world is hard to beat. You know, trips like this, it's just an odyssey. There's so much space, there's so much time. There's so many things that go through your head. You wake up from a good night's sleep, you have a good breakfast, you drive in the sunshine, you listen to the radio, and you think one way. And then at, at two o'clock in the morning, after you've been on the road 16 hours, and you're, you're half crazy, you think all kinds of stuff. A solo trip like this, across Canada and across the United States, 
it's something everyone should do just to experience what it's like. You know, sometimes I miss the company of having Brooke with me or my brother or my friend John who's I've taken this trip with several times. But at other times, I, I'm just thankful that I've got another chance to take a 4,000 mile solo road trip. Because how many of those are you ever gonna get in your life? You know, this might be my last one. It's probably the last one for this car. It's just nice to be out. It's nice to see God's earth. Take a look at what there is to see between point A and point B. Just let your head kind of unwind. Stop thinking about a lot of little things and just think about the road and think about the scenery. and Kind of put the rest of your life on the back burner for a little bit. There is nothing like it. You know, you wake up this morning and you hit the alarm clock and you jump into your routine and you just never know when is going to be the last day. None of us do. You could live to be a hundred. You could get struck by a train tomorrow. Who knows? It's good to just enjoy everything that you can. A protein bar on the tailgate of a crappy old car. A 4,000 mile road trip. Dinner with your family, hanging out with your friends, just relaxing and, and watching an episode of YouTube. Life's full of a lot of things to enjoy if you stop and take the time to enjoy them. I can't think anywhere else I'd rather be right now. You know, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to get to share stuff like this with you. So much of your life comes and goes and you have a hard time remembering what you did or, or how you spent your time or if you actually did anything that was worth doing since you can't remember it. It's really great to have an opportunity like this, to have an outlet to kind of capture some of your life and to share it with other people. I think it's a blessing to be able to do it. I'm so happy that I've got an opportunity to show you guys something like this. Enjoying a nice road trip, hanging out with your dog, listening to the radio, going mildly insane because you've <laughs> been talking to yourself for like 97 straight hours. It's all good. Let's load up. Or as my favorite cowboy would say, hit them up, move them out. Daisy's wondering, what the heck am I talking about? Daisy and I just passed through U.S. Customs and we are now back in the United States of America. And we just got into Alaska. Approximately five days, eight hours after we left Michigan. So we're going to go to Toke at least tonight. Maybe we'll go farther than that. I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be a late one. I don't know if it's worth going all the way to, to my property. We're both Daisy and I are both just whipped. If you watch really close in this next scene, you'll actually see another highway bear running across the road. We're just on the other side of Toke, but I want to show you guys something. So if you watch this channel, you might have saw the video I put out a while ago about your scariest moment in the wilderness. Well, right now, Daisy and I just pulled into Moon Lake, just outside of Toke, Alaska. And my scariest encounter in the wilderness happened right here. Let me show you. Right in that campsite where Daisy's walking into right now is where Brooke and I were camped. That time my previous collie, Huli, snuck out of the tent in the middle of the night and then came back and scared the living tar out of Brooke and I. If you ever wondered what it looked like, this is the place. We had two dogs. They were both in the tent with us. One of them weaseled his way out through the zipper, just wandered the wilderness for a few hours, and then decided to come back. He was walking through the leaves, crunch, crunch, crunch. Our other dog sat up and was just growling. You know, because the, the other dog thought there was another animal coming in. Didn't realize that it was the first dog that had got out. 
all three of us, our second dog Millie, my wife Brooke, and myself, all panicked as Hooli come running through the woods, burst right through the front door of the tent, right in our laps. That happened right here. Plenty of bears in the area. I've never seen one here at the lake, but I thought I had one in my lap once. And this is where it happened. Another quick side story. I stayed in this campsite the very first time I drove to Alaska, 20 years ago, this month. I had a bunch of sheetrock tools and I actually walked out on the lake because it was a little earlier than it is right now and the lake was frozen. I walked out onto the lake with my sheetrock hatchet and chopped ice out of the lake to make my coffee. And it was right here in this campsite. So fittingly, I'm gonna wrap up this year's 2018 Alaska road trip right here in the Moon Lake Campground just outside of Toke, Alaska. The same place I stayed 20 years ago. So thank you guys so much for taking your time to come along with me on this road trip. I hope you guys had as much fun on this trip as I did. Thanks for watching Bush Radical. My name's Dave Whipple. And be radical, eh? See you soon.